Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and today we'll be looking into something I've always struggled with in Blender. Baking textures. Why might you bake textures, you ask? Well, if you intend to bring your 3D model into a game engine like Unity or Unreal, or you want to further detail and paint over your model in Substance Painter, or you intend to sell your model on a 3D store like Sketchfab, Baking Textures is a great way to take the intricate textures you've created in Blender and create separate individual maps that comes with the model. If you're completely new to baking and you've made a kick-ass 3D model or sculpt with an intricate shader setup, you will need to sort of turn all of this mess into simplified individual maps that you can then put into the correct slots, be it a game engine like Unreal or the upload settings on Sketchfab. When searching for simple ways to bake textures, I came across an amazing add-on called Simple Bake created by Lewis. Now what Lewis has done is taken all of Blender settings and created a neat little menu that you can find under the render tab. If you can't see it, make sure you have Cycle selected as the render engine. If you scroll down, you'll see the Simple Bake menu. Here you can choose to use a few different bake modes, the first being PBR, which basically is a simplified way of creating PBR textures. The second is basically Blender's traditional way of baking textures, and the third is a specials menu, which lets you bake color ID maps, ambient occlusion, and so on. What I'll be using for this tutorial is the first PBR bake option. Here you get a selection of maps that you can bake, and if we jump to our main example for this demonstration, which is this rock that I've added snow on top of, you can see that it has a fairly complicated setup. So for the model, I've been using a Quixel Mega Scan, and let me show you what the original texture actually looks like if I just move that to the surface. So this is how the model got shipped with the texture and everything. And I actually mixed in a snow texture that I made based on following this tutorial that you're seeing on screen. And in that tutorial, the guy kind of talks about how to add snow to like any kind of mesh and how to create like an editable texture where you can choose the direction of the snow, the texture and so on. So I basically made a mix shader and mix that with the original texture. And what you get then is this, um, which is pretty handy. But anyway, so if I wanted to kind of export this and because obviously this is Quite the intricate setup right now. Trying to kind of get this to a game engine obviously wouldn't work because what I've done here is like it works internally in Blender but it doesn't in a game engine. So what I'd have to do is create individual maps that I can slot into something similar to the principled BSDF where we would need like a base color map or a diffuse map. We would maybe need a metallic map, a roughness map, specular map and so on. Under the bake settings, you can choose a few different maps. You can choose diffuse, you can choose metal, subsurface scattering, always difficult to say, uh, normal, roughness, glossy, and so on. And under the texture settings, you can choose if you want to do a custom resolution or if you want to do kind of like a test bake or 1K, 2K, and so on. Most of the time, I go for maybe like 2K, 4K, Rarely do I go for anything higher, but if I am doing an illustration where I kind of want something very close to the camera, I might go for like something higher. So 8K in that case. Under export settings, you can choose if you want to export the bakes. This is what we'll be using because we need to take all the new textures that we generate and export them to a folder, which then allows us to use on any game engine or on Sketchfab. And you can also export mesh. So if you've done any kind of like smart UV unwrapping automatically with this add-on, you'll probably have to export that mesh so that the UV maps obviously line up correctly. And yeah, I'll go over the rest of these settings, but right now what I want is to go in here and see which of these I kind of need to enable. So that would obviously be the diffuse, which is basically the color map. So that's what would go into the base color here. 
I've changed the subsurface. Actually, let's set that a bit lower. Before we do that, let's actually go into rendered mode here. So I'm in cycles right now and I can see yeah, the subsurface is a bit too high. So let's actually set that to something lower. Point 0.1. Yeah, let's go for that. And we see that we've obviously messed with specular. We've messed with roughness. So let's just go and do that. So subsurface, we've messed with the roughness. We haven't touched the metalness, so we don't need to think about that. And we need to press on the specular and that should be it. So let's move down. What I'm gonna do is just bake one K so this doesn't take as long. And I'm gonna go on export bakes and call this snowy cliff. I'm not gonna export the mesh right now, but I'll show you how all of that works later on. So let's go down the list. So I'm gonna choose PNG. You can obviously choose JPEG or TIFF. And as for the UV and map settings, I'm just gonna choose the default setting. Bake, I'm gonna call this snowy cliff. And memory limit, I'm gonna set it to no limit. Obviously like if you have a less powerful computer, maybe you would want to set this lower, so maybe to low, ultra low, it all depends on your setup obviously. Um, you can also have it kind of running in the background if you want, but I'm gonna just set it to foreground. So let's press bake PBR maps and go to the folder where we have the Blender file saved. Obviously you can't really bake any maps unless the Blender file is saved. And there we go, Snowy Cliff pops up and if we open it, we can see all of our bakes being saved. And if we now go through them, we can see the diffuse is saved out. So we have the rocks mixed in with the snow, which is exactly what we want. And we also have the roughness, the specular and the SSS. You also have an option to choose copy objects and apply bakes. And if you do that, it will duplicate your model basically and kind of apply all of the new textures. If we do that now, and we can choose hide source objects after bakes. So if we now press bake PBR maps, just kind of pay attention to what happens up here. And there we go. It might look like nothing has changed, but if we actually press onto the model, we can see that we now have new textures assigned. And if we open these, these are basically the exact same textures that I showed you in the folder. And there we go. So yeah, honestly, it's just as easy as that. It is so simple. And the only thing you need to make sure when doing this is that you have UVs. So if I go to the UV editor and select our mesh and go into edit mode, you can see it had all of the UVs unwrapped before. So before you attempt any baking of the maps, just make sure you have some sort of UVs. And if you're unsure, the way you unwrap things in Blender is pressing U when you're in edit mode and selected all of the faces of the model or the faces you want to unwrap. And you kind of get a little UV unwrapping menu here. I'm not gonna mess with that because when I got the model, it already came with UV maps beforehand. So all I needed to do is just kind of generate snow on top of everything. And then what I've done is just kind of merge those together. This is how the map originally looked, but after the PBR maps baking, we added some snow and this is how it looks right now. You can see how this can be very handy because instead of obviously going through Cycle's default kind of baking system, which isn't that intricate, but it just isn't very good and it's kind of very finicky and you have to kind of generate UV maps and you have to make sure that they have the correct name and then it's just a whole process to kind of go through. So I honestly just prefer this add-on, which I think is so simple, but also so good. Now, having gone through all of that, what if we want to bake multiple textures on multiple models onto just one map? The reason you would do this is to kind of optimize game performance in an engine, or if you want to export just one merged mesh to Sketchfab without dealing with uploading a whole lot of different texture maps. Simple Bake has a really simple answer to that question, namely the multiple objects to one texture set option under the UV and map settings. What that does is basically allow you to select the models with shift left click and make one texture map for both of the models. 
If you're worried about performance in a game engine or you just want to cut down on file size when uploading models, this is a great solution. However, you have to make sure that the UVs aren't overlapping. If that happens, you'll get a really messy model and it just won't really work. So for this example, we have two models. We have an anvil and we have a rock and both of them have their own sets of textures. It's a very simple setup. I just have basically a metal map and I have a rock map and I've just kind of slotted that into base color, changed some of the colors around and set that to UV unwrapping. So what we want to do now, if we want to bake this onto just one map and kind of join both of these models, we need to individually unwrap these models, but make sure, like I said earlier, that the UVs don't overlap. So what I'm going to do is head into UV editor and I'm just going to bring up the metal texture. So if I now enter edit mode with tab, you can see that it's unwrapped, but it's kind of covering the entire map, whereas we want it to only cover a portion so that the rock can cover another portion without overlapping with this metal texture. So let's just hover over the viewport here and press U and let's choose Smart UV Project and press OK. And that's actually what I've done here already. What I'm gonna do is scale this down and just kind of move it up here. And then I'm gonna choose the rock, head into edit mode with tab and do the same. I've already smart UV projected. And then I'm gonna scale that down. So now when I go into object mode and I highlight both of these models and head into edit mode, you can see how the individual models are unwrapped and we can see some of it overlapping over here. So what I'm actually gonna do is select the anvil again and let's just move that a bit further up and there we go. So now if we head into the render tab and make sure that we have cycles selected and let's actually head into rendered mode. And if we go down to the bake mode, let's see what we actually need. So we go into the shader editor. So we definitely need the diffuse. I've messed around with the metallic and roughness and specular. We do not need the alpha or the normal. So now if we select both models and scroll down, we need to go to the multiple objects to one texture set and choose that. If you only have one of the models selected, this will be grayed out. So make sure you have both selected. And then let's go down and we're gonna copy objects and apply bakes and hide source objects after bake. Let's just call this anvil and rock. Set the memory limit to no limit. And let's hit bake PBR maps. So we now got a copy of each of them. So now if we go into one of the models and let's open the diffuse, we can see that they now share the same texture, which is awesome. So you can control J, join them and just export this as one mesh. If I open up our folder here, you can see that this is how that map now looks. So we got different diffuse maps for both the anvil and the rock. And we also have the metalness, the roughness, and the specular. It is honestly just as easy as that. I really struggled with baking multiple textures onto one map before, but this add-on just makes it so easy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to mention what workflow would work best for uploading on, for example, Sketchfab. Since we want the new generated textures and model to be linked, I highly recommend having the copy objects and apply bakes turned on. And then both the export bakes and export mesh option turned on. These options will give you a neat little folder which is now ready to be uploaded. Lewis has also added a really handy Sketchfab upload option which takes care of most of this I actually, it's a bit embarrassing, but I haven't gotten it to work as I keep getting an error, even though I've added my API code in the add-on settings, but I mean, the option's there if you get it to work. <laughs> Under the Sketchfab upload options, and I'm using an old scope to show you what I mean, you get the option to upload textures and then just add the correct textures to the correct slots. Similar to Unreal, you just drop in the textures and drag them to the correct input. I've only started using this add-on, but I know that this is just going to make my life so much easier. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It is so simple to use. It honestly just took me a few minutes to like figure out. 
You can find it on Blender Market, which I will link to in the pinned comment and description below. Massive thanks to Lewis for developing such an awesome add-on. If you're unsure about anything, he's added an FAQ page that goes over all the settings and further details, so I would definitely check that out. So that's the end of the video. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out there and makes your lives a little bit easier. I know it's made mine a little bit easier. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.